Hey what's up guys, Alone here, and today I want to talk about AIM, which the enemy Hanzo obviously has insane amounts of, and your Hanzo, well he has none, he's the worst Hanzo you have ever seen. But for real though, AIM is something I've been thinking quite a bit on recently, and the reason to that is because when I face a smurf who is in diamond and clearly is a higher than diamond player, they're playing Tracer, they're demolishing my team, hitting every shot just one clipping me instantly, or I'm facing a Widow player that's just insane, hitting every Every single shot and just wiping our entire team. Then I think to myself, well my main is in 3800, which possibly that player could be, but I am not that great at aiming and the reason to that is because I am a support main and I play a lot of Sumetra and I play Winston, I play Ana and I play Senyata, I play a lot of support basically and that's not because I felt like in the beginning I had terrible aim but because I just like those heroes. In all games that I've played I'm usually the support player, I don't like to just go and frag out constantly, I just like being the one that's tactical. And of course Ana and Senyata are the two supports that require the most aim one is hitscan slash projectile and the other one is only projectiles and I like to play them just to keep my aim fresh and some games when I just feel like my aim is off I go over to Symmetra and yeah that might sound stupid but on some maps I can really carry a Symmetra if we can solo heal it or if I just really can't do it then I just go Mercy but most of the time my aim is good enough to play Ana or Sen at at least master rank. But I always had that thing in the back of my head and I also have experienced that quite a lot on my alt accounts. What if I get into a team which have two players insta-locking tanks and two players insta-locking healers? And I am sitting there with no clue what DPS to play. I can play Genji okay and I can play Pharah okay, but what if they have a Pharah and I need to play Hitscan? I have never ever been good at hitscan, I can't play Widow at all, I cannot play Soldier, I cannot play Tracer, I cannot play McCree, I just can't play any hitscans. And that's why I always feel like aim is something that I, you just have to have, even if you're a mercy one trick. You need to practice your aim, no matter what, because one day you're going to get bored of playing mercy. Or, for example, Mercy gets completely destroyed and she cannot be played to gain any more SR than Diamond. You need to be able to play any other character and most of them do require aim. So in the beginning of this video I had a clip of me playing Hanzo in the practice range and I just want to say one thing about the practice range and that's all I'm going to say in this video. The practice range is good for very few things in my opinion. It's good for just, you know, they, they have the same routes all the time, the bots. It's very predictable, very easy to get the kills. If you get 10 kills there really quickly, that doesn't mean anything in an actual game. It doesn't mean you're going to headshot 10 players in 15 seconds because you did it in the practice range. The practice range is good for testing your sensitivity and pro players could say even more reasons but that's my experience from the practice range that you can just go to a target and then aim at it and then try to aim to another target really quickly and try to make sure you land on it really quickly because that's what I did and I went there and I went to the two bots that stood beside each other and I shot one in the head and then snapped over to the other one just to feel if my sensitivity was way too high I would go way past it and if it was way too low I would not even get close to it so I just took my sensitivity from that and that's how I figured out what sensitivity I needed. So I want to talk about aim percentages and how it can help you get better at tracking your progress in aiming and also be a very irrelevant stat when you're actually looking at the grand scheme of things. So for the grand scheme of things, if you have 42% accuracy as soldier and you are in, for example, masters, that doesn't necessarily mean the 42% accuracy is the reason to why you're in masters and another guy in top 500 has 46% accuracy, all you need to do is go from 42 to 46 and you're going to be a top 500. That's not really how it works. If he has 42% accuracy then, and you have 46, but you're shooting the absolutely wrong targets, you're shooting the tanks the entire time, not ever focusing on the healers, while the other guy is focusing the healers, Obviously his aim is going to be lower, but yours is going to be higher percentage-wise, but you're just shooting endless shields 
or just shooting big road hogs and all you're doing is really cheesing the stats and it's not actually effective for your gameplay. That's why they are higher ranked and the percentages doesn't really actually matter. All that matters is that you hit the shots when you need to hit the shots. If you need to quickly kill a McCree otherwise he's going to kill your healer, that's when it matters. If you have 100% accuracy then, that's going to matter if your overall accuracy in the game is after that 20% if you didn't ever have to do a clutch play like that again. I really do believe that that's the big difference between the really really good players and the decent players. The point where you can really go in for that one kill that is needed to win the team fight and you do kill it almost every single time. When I play Tracer and I go in for the Lucio kill and I know that he has his ultimate and if I do kill him we're probably going to win that team fight. I usually cannot kill him because my aim is not good enough, but when I look at the top Tracer players like Jesus or Soon, both of them, they just one clip them, so smooth every single time, and I really do believe that that's the reason why they're the top players, not because they have insane aim 100% of the time and they just sit there shoot the Roadhog the entire game to have 70% accuracy. And I feel like that's really important for players to know not to flame their DPSers, because if you have a Tracer on your team and he can't constantly team wipe the entire enemy team that doesn't make him a bad player if he went into the enemy team and killed that Sanyara before the team fight he already made a good effort at winning the team fight if he died straight after that's obviously kind of bad but if he killed that Sanyata and then stayed alive that's actually a very big opening for your team to push in and he did a good job so just because you're a DPSer doesn't mean you're supposed to kill the entire enemy team every time. All it means is that you should be able to know when you need to push in with your team, where your positioning should be to be able to get those important picks and that you have the aim to be able to get those picks. Now obviously I don't have the best aim in the entire game and that's why I don't want to give all these different advice on how to improve your aim drastically 101. You're going to never believe this tactic I used to get insane aim in two days. No, all I can give you is something that I do maybe three times a week for an hour. So I don't really do it that much but just to keep in kind of tacked on my decent aim that I do have still and I want to get better at hit scan so I'm going to try to do this a bit more and that's the mini game or the mode in custom you can see in the background and that is when I have a lot of HP I take basically no damage and I do no damage and I have infinite ammo and I do this for soldier and tracer most of the time and I guess it could work for all the different heroes in the game but I just think it's really good because the different bots that I have are kind of small targets like McCree, Sarya is a small tank, I have Mei I think and the small supports like Senyata and Lucio and I just go into the game and I try to shoot as much as I can without stopping ever because I have infinite ammo. And I do the same with Soldier and just try to keep as much accuracy up as I can and that is where percentages is good. You can actually play the entire game and then look at the end of it and see, oh, I had 35% accuracy and the last time I had 33%. That is pretty good. And all I did was just try to shoot targets instead of actually trying to go for the clutch kills. You just shoot targets. Any targets you can see, you just shoot them. And that's a moment where I think percentages can be good for getting better at aiming. Now just as some last words I want to say, I went over to Seagull Stream, the professional Overwatch player, and I asked him how long did it take you to get what you would call good aim, because that guy has insane aim on hit scans, projectiles and everything really. And he said something that really interested me. He said it took him several thousand hours on his first FPS game to get what he would call good aim. Now if you think about it, my main account is Silver Border, and most players doesn't have a silver border and I have two accounts which are level 300 together so I have almost 900 levels that means about 900 hours played of overwatch now I haven't played much hitscan my overall hitscan might be 40 hours gameplay so if I would have played hitscan all these 900 hours I would still have to play hitscan more than twice as much to get what he would call good aim that's how fast he learned and he's a professional player now. So it just takes a long time to get really, really good aim. So if you look at all those pro players having insane tracking, it's because they've spent a bunch of thousands of hours getting good at it. So if you have a silver border like me, and you don't feel like you have the most insane aim ever in the game, and you see another pro player have a silver border, it's probably because they've played FPS games their entire life.
And yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it and found it interesting or at least nice to listen to in the background of doing something else. And if you want to see more of my content, then you can go to my YouTube channel and check that out. Or you can subscribe and see when I post new content if you don't want to watch my old stuff. Or you can just click the video that's on the screen right now. It's probably one of my most proudest works I've ever created in my entire life. So it probably is worth clicking. I'm not sure. Uh, could be. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.